I like to believe that there is magic in everything. And so I grew up believing in fairy tales and magic and the whole glittery aspect of being a child and childish beliefs. And so as an adult, I took that and I have a very practical approach to life, I think, which is kind of odd considering that I write fantasy. So it's, I have started to consider science as what magic is in our world. And so when I applied that to fire and flight, I was like, okay, how can I make this what I know about science and turn it into magic in a fantasy setting? Hey, everyone, and welcome. I am Morgan Gis McDonald, founder and CEO of Paper Raven Books. And I have with us today a super special guest who is launching not only the first book in her author career, but the first book of a trilogy. And so this first book is Fire and Flight. The trilogy is Heirs of Tenebris. And I would love to introduce to everyone, Brianna Shafrey. Welcome, Brianna. Hi. We are super excited because you have been writing for years and years. You're a young author. I think that is one of the most amazing things about this age of publishing is that we really have this whole generation of young authors who are coming out with incredible, groundbreaking, especially YA epic fantasy, which is what you're writing. And I know you've been writing for a long time, actually, and so we'll, we'll get to your yeah. author story. And before we get there, I'd love for you to tee off like this book. So Fire and Flight, who do we get to meet inside of this book and what's happening? So first, right off the bat, you meet Cedric, who is technically... I like to call him my morally gray chaos disaster character because there's a lot of layers to him and there's a lot of things going on. And then you meet Nyla, our main character, who she is not having the best morning. And as she has to flee for her life now, she ends up trying just to get her life together. And you can see that in those first few moments of her waking and trying to run for her life. And then it's just this very candid moment with Nyla. And so you start to get to wonder why is she out here in the shadow forest? Why are the leaves sapphire? What's going on here? What is this world that I'm in now? Because I am clearly not in Kansas anymore. And then later on, you, we get to meet Bander. And again, another mysterious character. You're like, okay, what is his background now? It's a little bit different. He seems established, but what is his intention here and then you end up meeting Shamira who is not human. Very nice. I love this setup. And we're in the shadow forest as part of the setting here. And as you said, we're not in Kansas anymore. Part of this world that you've created has elements of like magic and like magic plus electricity. And there's like this whole sort of unfolding of this unnatural power that these people have access to. Can you give us a little bit of the flavor of the world that's being sure. built here? I like to believe that there is magic in everything. And so I grew up believing in fairy tales and magic and the whole glittery aspect of being a child and childish beliefs. And so as an adult, I took that and I have a very practical approach to life, I think, which is kind of odd considering that I write fantasy. So it's, I have started to consider science as what magic is in our world. And so when I applied that to fire and flight, I was like, okay, how can I make this what I know about science and turn it into magic in a fantasy setting. You see it in the language too, with magicity and plegic, there are those root words of plumbing and magic. So I Franken words some things and out came plegic and magicity, which is a form of magical plumbing where you use magic spells and a pipe system to help carry waste and manage sewer systems and stuff like that. And you can get water on demand it's this weird industrial revolution, but not quite era. So it's funny to see how it all came together because when you look at the timeline of Fire and Flight, you have this 600 year history, more than 600 year history now, but yet you have these different elements. The year is technically 21 something, I forget what it is, but yet they still have elements of this colonial period and this industrial revolution period. So I had a lot of fun creating the world and just mashing all of these different elements together. What I love about Fire and Flight is that it really is a world building experience for the reader. You really get to, as you said, bring in elements of kind of 
something that's familiar from our world, but introduce things in a new way. And so you get this entirely new world, this system of magic, this way of living, plus really in-depth characters. And we were talking even before we hit record for this interview is that sometimes when you're really interested in epic fantasy, sometimes epic fantasy goes really deep into kingdoms and politics and warfare. And what you've given us here is an experience of true adventure and magic and characters. I'd love for you to tell us just a little bit more about if they're not involved in politics and things like that, what are the conflicts that these characters are really experiencing inside of the shadow forest and in this world? A lot of times in books, you have man versus man, man versus nature, or man versus society. I went with man versus man and man versus self, as well as a little bit of man versus nature, because we do have Nyla. She's a nomad. She has no home. She's crisscrossing all of Tenebris multiple times over, probably. And so she finds the solace in the shadow forest. And I've always described Fire and Flight as a journey of self-discovery because my characters are coming into themselves. They're discovering things about themselves that they otherwise wouldn't have. And so when we meet each character, they're isolated. They're isolated from their kin. They're isolated from their civilization. They're isolated from society. They're isolated from the deepest, most intimate parts of themselves. And this is something that I feel like people need to explore in our lives that we don't always get to do, especially being so young. And we don't always get circumstances, which is probably a good thing because most circumstances that make you realize things about yourself aren't typically good, but sometimes they are. Sometimes it's publishing a book. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So folks, if you're here, you're listening, you're watching, you're thinking, okay, this sounds like my kind of book. We've got epic fantasy, YA, character driven, world building galore, magic, all the fun adventure that you can handle in a YA fantasy book. The good news is that you can actually grab a free copy of the ebook right now. If you go to paperravenbooks.com slash fire and flight, all one word. It's linked up next to this video. So you can just click that link. It'll take you over to Amazon. You'll see that the book is on promotion right now. So you can grab the ebook right now. Of course, you can grab physical copies if you prefer that as well for retail price. But the free ebook, we want to get out to you guys right now because this is book one of the trilogy. And book two and three are right on its heels. Brianna and I were just talking. They're mapped out. They're planned out. They're going through the publication process now. Okay. So this is a perfect time to go ahead and grab book one, Fire and Flight, and get the free copy of the ebook. Go through it now, and you'll be teed up and ready for books two and three to wrap up the trilogy that is the heirs of Tenebris. So go ahead and do that while you're here, while you're thinking about it. And Brianna, you just brought up this whole publishing <laughs> process, right? So like, you have been writing and thinking about these books for a while. Can you give us a little insight into your sure. writing process? I was a novice writer when I started Fire and Flight. I think I started six years ago. I was in high school. It was a creative expressions course. And it was my first time taking any type of writing course or creative course like this. And it started off with what used to be the first opening paragraph of this girl waking up in this forest. She had silver hair and lilac colored eyes and that was all I had. And after that, I just fell in love with it and it filled me with such energy and vigor that I was like, I have to get this down on paper. I have to get this down. And so every free moment that I had, I was working on it. And then that developed into this process of, okay, write something every day, whether it's working on this novel, whether it's working on a short story that I now have a few published on my website. And then it's became this process of, okay, get the draft done, edit, revise, read through it, make notes in the margin, make it as messy as you want to, and then unscramble it later on. That is perfect. And did you know that it was going to be a trilogy or are you enhancing it as you went along? Let's see how this thing unfolds. Yeah, I have learned that I am a pantser, which leads to some interesting circumstances because when you get ideas and you're like, oh, this is perfect. I have to write it down immediately. And then you're on vacation with your family and you have no paper or no computer. And you're like, okay, so now I am traveling with everything. <laughs> you never make that mistake again, right? Like you know, put your never. notepad at the ready. <laughs> I got the notepad, I got the laptop, I've got whatever I need and everything. I probably overpack now, but eh, that's the life of a writer. 
Yes, exactly. <laughs> Hashtag writer's life. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so now that you've been through this process, you went through kind of the six years of writing and thinking and developing this mm -hmm. world and these characters. Now you're seeing book one all the way through the process, ready for release. Two and three are close on its heels. Is there any lesson learned or words of advice or encouragement that you would offer to a younger version of yourself? I am a very introverted person. I don't trust social media. I don't like social media, but I would say definitely get on social media. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there and people will like you. They, it's a shock, but they actually like you <laughs> and you will find places and people to connect with on social media to help promote your writing, to help promote other people's writings. You'll read some of the greatest things you will ever read on social media. Who knew? But it's true. You will find other writers just like yourself. And what's great is that those bonds transcend age too. So when you're in school, you grow up with kids your own age, which is great, but sometimes you don't always connect with them. And so having that ability online now is very interesting. And I wish I had done something like that sooner because I ended up finding a lot of amazing people and those writing communities are fantastic. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. And are there any favorite social platforms that you have discovered? Surprisingly, Tumblr. It's a little old school in that you can have a sense of being anonymous in those old school forums. It's not as glamorous as Instagram. So I feel like a lot of those problems that you have with other social platforms, it has other problems, but you don't get some of the vanity issues or the unrealistic standards or how disingenuous some other platforms can be. And I really enjoyed Tumblr, but I'm also really enjoying TikTok. I just got it like last week. And I like the fact that it, I am getting engagement on it, which can sometimes be hard to do on other platforms. Instagram is another favorite though. I will say algorithms and vanity aside, I do enjoy it. I definitely recommend those. Facebook is great because then you can create groups specifically for your books, which I know other authors do, and I probably will do it later in life or later in my career. And then Twitter is, I'm still figuring out Twitter. <laughs> the character limit gets me every time. Fair, fair. I feel like a really big takeaway is Tumblr is still mm -hmm. around and kicking. And you're yeah. right, it has some of that flavor of the old school forum where you don't have to use like your face as a profile picture. You don't have to mm -hmm. use your name. You don't have to reveal stuff about your life or take selfies every day. It really can be more content driven, relationship driven. So I think that's And a there's no character limit, which is great. <laughs> I think the last time I posted recently it was a 20 page word doc I double space everything though but it was a 20 page word doc and I was like yeah y'all have fun with this and, do and they did have read it on Tumblr yeah, people have read it that's amazing like even for beta readers so are you using this as like a beta reader no I use it a lot of just trying to get a following I'm not gonna lie that is my vain little secret here but I use it mostly for writing prompts. And so that is a great gateway into the Writefler community on Tumblr, the writing community. And you get your work out there. You get people, you connect with other writers, you connect with other people who like reading your work. And then once you get that niche, that catapults you and gives you this confidence to keep going. So now I think I have, I just finished a nine part short story series on Tumblr based off of a writing prompt that I had found. And then I just started another one that somebody had requested me to continue. So yeah, you make friends, it's great. So you said the community is called Write Blur? Yes, so it's W-R-I-T-E-B-L-R. Write Blur, there you go, folks. Hot tip from, <laughs> from the author who is deep in the trenches right now. So <laughs> thanks for that, Brianna. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Anything I can do to help. That's right. <laughs> Anyone who's here, if you're like, ah, I'm really interested in Fire and Flight and how Brianna's brought this world together, good news. Grab the ebook for free right here, right now, today. Paperavenbooks.com slash fire and flight. It's linked up next to this video. You can grab that today, read it on the weekend, but go ahead and get it today while you're here and while you're thinking about it. If you know anyone else who loves epic fantasy, young adult, character driven, magic, adventure, world building, tag them, send this link to them so that they can also get a free copy of the ebook today. Brianna, any words for your readers who are diving into your book? 